In this demonstration, we're going to see how we can create a mechanical model of an aileron. The system we're modeling looks like this. The aileron must be rotated to a specific angle. To rotate the aileron, a mechanical linkage can extend and contract. The system must rotate about these two points to permit this motion. We're going to create a model of this mechanical system within Simulink using Sim Mechanics. The model we're going to build will look like this, and when we're finished, we'll see a three-dimensional animation of the aileron moving through this profile. I'll now switch over to the model so you can see how this is done. Sim Mechanics can be found beneath Simscape in the Simulink Library browser. We'll define our model in this empty Simulink window. The first thing that we'll need to do is define gravity. In the Mechanism Configuration block, we'll set gravity to be in the minus y direction. The next thing that we'll need is a fixed point in space to which we will attach one end of the cylinder and the aileron. We'll use the world frame to define this point. Our cylinder can rotate about one of its ends. To define this rotational degree of freedom, we'll add a revolute joint. To define the cylinder, the rod, and the other parts, we're going to use this library of pre-built and pre-parameterized parts. Our cylinder block has been defined using basic sim mechanics blocks where we can define the attachment points as well as uh, basic geometric shapes and extrusions defined in MATLAB. Here we can define mass properties and visual properties as well. Sim mechanics uses simulation technology above and beyond what is available in normal Simulink. We'll use the solver configuration block to have access to necessary settings. At this point we'll update the diagram and we can see when we run the simulation that our cylinder swings like a pendulum attached at one end. Next we'll add the, the rod. The rod has a translational degree of freedom with respect to the cylinder. To define that translational degree of freedom we'll use a prismatic joint. The aileron has a rotational degree of freedom with respect to the rod. So we'll add the aileron block and we'll make a copy of the revolute joint to define the rotational degree of freedom. We'll connect that here and if we go into the aileron block we can see that we have used a general extrusion to define the aileron shape. If I double click on this you can see the mat what the MATLAB data looks like and we are going to use this extrusion to define the aileron. We know that the aileron rotates with, with respect to a fixed point in space. To define the rotational degree of freedom, we'll add a revolute joint. And to define where that point in space is, we'll use a rigid transform. This frame transform allows us to define a point that is attached to our reference frame at the axis point on the aileron. When I update the diagram now, you can see the three parts that we've defined, the aileron, the cylinder, and the rod. And when we run the simulation, you'll see that the aileron pivots like a pendulum. If I sp speed up the replay of the animation, you can see that it swings through one cycle. And if I rotate it, you can see it from a slightly different angle. I can also change the background color to make this easier to see. So at this point, we have our mechanical model of the aileron. What we would like to do is to view some outputs on a Simulink scope. To view the angle to which the aileron has rotated, we'll go into the joint block and activate position. Here we can see a signal output that has the angle of the aileron. We'll need to convert this physical signal to a Simulink signal so that we can view it on a Simulink scope. Here we can define the units to be in degrees. We'll go back into the Simulink Syncs library, get a scope block, and connect it here. Now when we run the simulation you can see that the, piv the aileron is indeed swinging back and forth like a pendulum coming back up to zero degrees. To actuate this system we're going to add an input to the prismatic joint. We'll actuate this with a force. If we go to the sources library and get a step block we will actuate this system. At 20 seconds we'll apply a force of two newtons to this prismatic joint. We'll need to convert this simulating signal to a physical signal using another converter block. Now we'll rerun the simulation and we'll see that the aileron behaves slightly differently. Instead of coming just back up to zero degrees, it actually swings back up above horizontal. We can also see this on the Simulink scope. In this demonstration, we have seen how we can use some mechanics to model the mechanical portion of an aileron.